outside. So pour's done. Now we gotta let it cure up a little bit and then the real work starts. The pouring it's the easy part. Stamping is stamping's gonna be where we're really busting it. Hopefully the it stays overcast and cloudy like this, that's gonna help us a little bit. Sun comes out, boy, we're gonna be moving. So catch back up to you in a couple minutes. You move that over to there, we'll see if we can get them to look good. We gotta put a few in it, I think. Especially down in that thin area. I'm not gonna go deep, I'm just gonna pour it and take a look. What are you talking about? Groover, that's not a groover, that's a joint. Well, in Maine, it's a groover, but. Uh, that's what that's what the guy that taught me called it. Uh, it powder right in the middle spirit. Oh you, no kidding. You can touch up afterwards that way too. So what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting in a few joints in the deck because we're coming back tomorrow to clean it and saw it but I want to get a couple of joints in it to make sure it doesn't crack overnight so hopefully if it does want to shrink and crack I was behind I was behind it'll crack right in these joints and Bindi. we won't show up in so the morning and just have a random crack Bindi. somewhere and I was counting his revolutions he was having a now what we're doing is we're mag floating the surface, getting the surface smoothed out a little bit. Concrete's really starting to firm up now. So it's the preparatory time just before we get ready to stamp. And we're using, I'm using that funny float to reach out there and get as much of it mag floated as I can. And if there's anything we can't get with that, then we'll just do it by hand like what Hart is doing right now. Or I'll get on my skids, my, on my hands and knees on my skids, and I'll get out there and I'll mag float it by hand that way. Right after we get done mag floating, it's generally the time we start snapping. So Darren's gone over to grab the liquid release. Put a little bit of pigment in it. We put a little bit of uh, charcoal powdered release in there and mixed it all in. Just shook it up really good. So we'll have a little bit of a secondary color in the liquid release itself. It's close. Right there's one little spot. And then this softens up We always like to roll the edges. Just get some texture on the edges. Sometimes when you set the stamp over the, the form, you don't get a really good texture from the stamp itself because it's so rigid. And then off we go, off to the races now. <laughs> you know, we figure this is just about a thousand square feet around here. And the concrete's already set up enough to support our weight stepping on these stamps. So it's only going to do that. It's only going to be able to accept the impression from the stamp for so long because I mean concrete starts setting up quicker and quicker especially on a, on a really nice day so we figure we got about 30 to 40 minutes probably 30 to 45 minutes to get from here all the way around the deck and get it all stamped so we we got two sets of stamps here and Darren and Luke are going to take one set and go one way and then Harvey and I will take the other set of stamps and go the other way and we'll meet them you know wherever we end up meeting on the other side of the pool deck just 
just to kind of increase the efficiency of us stamping, increase the speed of the way we're stamping. Because right now it's stamping pretty easy, and if it takes us 30 minutes to get around to the other side, I can guarantee it's going to be a lot firmer over there on that side. And these aren't the biggest stamps in the world, so I mean they don't cover a ton of square footage apiece. So it takes a lot of picking up and setting down to cover some area with these. And they do only go one way, even though they all look the same. There's really only one way they all fit together, and so you got to make sure you keep the there's, uh, the words on the top of the stamps. I believe they're just called Butterfield. Keep them words all going the same way. That helps. That helps keep the stamps all going all in the same direction. And then the different colors have the different patterns of rock under them. Black, green, and blue all have different different types of rock patterns underneath them. So we try not to make it. You know, it's impossible not to get the same colors next to each other because we just don't have that many stamps, that many different colors. But we try to make the pattern as little repeatable as possible as we're doing this. That liquid release, I mean, that's only good for few minutes after you spray it on because it starts to evaporate right afterwards. So you don't want to spray too much out ahead of you, you just be wasting it. Um, but you want to get enough out ahead of you so you know you can put down a, ha a good handful of stamps before you have to keep spraying over itself again. You can see how the charcoal color stays. That's going to stay in there too after after everything's all said and done, we get done sawing it and washing it, coming back and sealing it, which you'll all see on this video. Um, that that basically that same color is going to stay there. Those two tone effect. There's not really going to be much release that gets washed off when you put it in the liquid like this. look at the wording on top of the stamps you can see the wording on them is all going the same way now you get a pretty good idea of it right there so it has it stays that way with you know the way me and Luke are doing it and then however Darren and I mean me and Harvey but however Darren and Luke are doing it up there they got to keep theirs going the same way either uh, and then when we meet up there's going to be a small section in there where we got to kind of tool it in by hand because when we meet up, these aren't going to all fit together perfectly. It's just the way it goes when you stamp around a pool like this. You're going to have to hand cut in the last, the last little pattern, as you'll see here in a second. See, Harvey and Darren are really having to pound pretty good now. A lot harder than when we first started. But we're going to make it. It's, it's still soft enough, so we're... We're just going to make it here. Okay. Alright, so this is where we both met up. There's that little section right in between the two that the stamp just won't fit in there. So. You know, we'll lay the flexible one in there. We'll get a little bit of texture, a little bit of the of the joint pattern in there, and then we can finish those joints off by hand and just try to make those look those rocks in there that we have to carve in look very similar to the ones that are on the bottom of the stamps and not too out of place. And that's kind of what Luke's doing right now. He's just taking that little tool we got, putting in some joints, carving in a rock in there, and trying to make it look as as normal as possible and there was really only one small section I mean we got pretty close to each other with each set of stamps so he's just gonna finish it off with this very last one making sure he's got that stamp right where it needs to go put the joints in get a little texture from the bottom of the stamp on there using his hand and then Harvey's just gonna make sure the joints 
deep enough so everything looks really good. So that's it. Just about a thousand square feet of stamp pool deck, field stone pattern. We was right on the borderline of it getting pretty firm right, right at the end, so it's quite a quite a timing challenge going around a pool deck, especially one this size. But it looks like we got really good joints, really good seams, really good texture. So I would say this is a win. Came out really nice. So tomorrow we come back and we'll saw it, wash it, clean it, strip the forms, and then we'll give it a few days, come back and seal it after that. Alright, so this is the next day and we're just laying out the saw cuts, basically going around because the, the pool is kind of, I don't know, kidney shaped or whatever you want to call it, there's nothing square on the pool, you just kind of walk around and I just do it by eye, you know, about every eight feet, seven or eight feet, I'll put a little rock and then we'll eyeball the chalk line to what we think looks good for a saw cut and just get our cuts in there. And for us, this has worked really good over the years to control the cracks around the pool. I haven't really had any trouble with these new pools that we do and, you know, sawing them like this. That's an old electric soft cut saw. We've had that thing for years and years and years. Um, that works. We actually got two of those. Those work really good. Not even sure if they sell those anymore. But that goes about an inch and a quarter deep with a new blade, you know, with a four inch thick slab. That's plenty deep enough. And then once we get the saw cuts in, you know, we'll brush off the dust. And then the next step is just to clean clean the top of the concrete, get any residue off. Right? Sometimes we'll take our metal pins like this and just go over the joints and just rub out the joints um, for anything that looks rough. Anything that Sometimes when you stamp concrete, you'll get some concrete that comes up in between the two stamps. And that's all we were doing is just rubbing out those little tiny pieces that look rough. So Luke, Luke's here now and he's just, we'll go over the whole thing like this, just with the pressure washer and remove any, as you can see there's really not much coming off that thing, remove any excess sealer and then we'll just put some Dawn dish detergent in a 5 gallon bucket with some water and we'll just scrub the surface and get any little bit of release residue off the surface, anything that would keep the sealer from, from adhering to the surface. And this works pretty good, but is what we found. This part that really doesn't take too long. It's just definitely a lot easier with more people, but two, two people could do this pretty easily too. And then that's basically it. We'll just lightly scrub that on the surface, rinse it off, let it dry for a few days. And then here's Darren. Darren came back. It was actually on a weekend when he came back. So the first thing he does is just get the leaf blower out with the Walt blower and blow any dust off the surface and that's the sealer we use D1 stamped concrete sealer from uh, Decocrete Supply you can get that online I'll have the link for it down in the description we like this sealer it doesn't flake or peel uh, we put on three really light coats and that seems to do the job really well it is a topical sealer so you're gonna wanna you know reseal either every year or every couple of years just to help keep the concrete protected but it dries really fast so you can go all the way around this thing basically once you get around it once where you start is going to be dry you're going to be able to go right back around it again and then a third time without having to wait in between hits really on something like this especially on a day like this yeah, and that's what it'll look like right there when you're done so that's basically, you know, how we stamp around a pool deck. It's it's not the easiest thing to do on some of these curved ones, but it can be done, especially with enough people with enough experience. If you want to learn how to do this stuff, join the Concrete Underground down below for all my training videos. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you on the next one.